What is next for Anthony Joshua, peoples? People, 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 people. What's next for the Donny Anthony Joshua? You've got your usual suspects, all these opinionated pocket watchers talking about you've made enough money in the sport, you're rich now, you've made great investments, you've done such great stuff outside of the ring. Why should you have to want to fight anymore? you got silk pyjamas, you got silk sheets, you don't care about the sport like that anymore. You're a businessman, you're not really a boxer, man. you're a businessman, you're a bodybuilder. All of these type of things are being thrown around and said about Anthony Joshua by not one person that actually knows the person. Not one of these comments are from someone who actually knows Anthony Joshua, the man himself. At the end of the day, he's very scrutinised in the opponent choices that he has. Once he lost the belts, everybody was expecting him to just fight all the top contenders straight away, scrutinising him. He was never really going to be allowed to go and work his way from grassroots back up to the top and in all honesty he never really got the chance to work his way up from grassroots to the top because he was fast-tracked by the time he fought Dylan White which was his 15th fight I didn't think he was ready to fight any real like champions at this point he had a rivalry with Dylan White that really stemmed from the amateurs where Dylan White knocked him out and I think it was his I think it was Anthony Joshua's like second or third amateur fight and it was Dylan White's first amateur fight and he beat Anthony Joshua with also a knockdown in there and if you watch the knockdown it's a very similar knockdown to the knockdowns he was getting against Daniel Dubois so they had that rivalry from the amateurs so they came and had this fight in his 15th fight after he had just knocked out Gary Cornish, who was actually the British and the Commonwealth heavyweight champion at the time. So this is the thing about Anthony Joshua's rise to the top. He was a footballer. He loved football back in the day. That was his thing, football, dirt bikes, running around, keeping up, mess. He was trying to really play football, to be fair, and he never really made it. And then when he got banned from his area in Watford, when he came to London, he just was rolling around with his cousin who was a boxer. And he went into the gym and he was like, all right, let me try a thing. And he got in the ring and he knocked out a couple man. And everyone got excited. He was like, oh, my days, we found something great. And then when he actually got into fighting and getting into the amateur stage, and after he lost to Dylan White, they still pushed him and he still went on and done some great things in the amateur circuit against guys who had been fighting all their lives. And it was like, this guy had just come out of nowhere knocking out people. Because in the amateur scene, British and worldwide, but let's just talk about Britain because that's where we are. Everyone kind of knows each other. Everyone knows who the up and coming prospects and stuff. So when someone comes out of nowhere doing all this stuff, people are like, what the hell? And it was quite mad. But little did they know that Daniel Dubois was probably watching all of this with his dad probably telling him, listen, look at this guy just getting all the fame straight away. You're going to get in the ring with that guy and you're going to knock him out. He, he can't fight. He only just started boxing the other day. I've been having you in this ring since you were five years old, son. This boy started boxing, he was 19. What's going on? You can't let this guy... When you get into this realm, you're going to face this guy and you're going to knock him out. Probably from back then, from when he went to the Olympics, when he first turned pro and Eddie Hearn was basically parading him around the UK, stadium fight after stadium fight on the undercards of big fights all around the UK, building his name, building his status. Daniel Dubois was probably with his family watching this thinking, I've got this guy, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. We can do it right now. We could do it right now. You don't intimidate me. You know, <laughs> you know, like that. So, differently, there's this guy called Rick Glazer on Twitter. He seems to be very knowledgeable with what's going on in and around boxing at all times. And he tweets, Being told by a source that has been very reliable, Eddie Hearn saying Anthony Joshua will exercise his rights to a rematch is really a combination of Hearn, Baba Luba and wishful thinking. As AJ is going the sensible route, AJ will retire. And that is clearly the right decision. Anthony Joshua has had a Hall of Fame career and is a wealthy man. And he'll leave boxing with his health intact. Congratulations, Anthony Joshua. But then, he must have not seen this. Uh, yes, saying that we came up short, but look, we've got to look at all the positives. That's the mindset and that's the perspective that we have to have, a positive one, always. Look at what we've achieved in the space of 11 years. It's phenomenal. And I want to thank every single one of you that's been riding with me. What a roller coaster journey. But you know what the problem is? Is that it's far from over yet. You know, we've done it once. 
We've done it twice. Doing it, for, doing it a third time hasn't been easy, but I believe it's something I can achieve. It's about making the right steps forward, working hard, improving, and it's got to come from here more than anything. It can't come from any external voices or influences. It's got to come from here. And it's only been a day, but when I sit back and I'm thinking, I know I've got a lot of this, man. I know I've got a lot of this. So yeah, just a video to say, thanks for your support. Thanks for being on this roller coaster journey with me. Keep your seatbelts tight because deep, deep, deep down in here, I know we've got a lot more to bring, a lot more to bring to the game. And long may it continue. British boxing, I appreciate you. We rise up together. Let's go. And it seems like after seeing that, on the next day, September the 23rd, Rick Glazer comes out and tweets, now being told that Anthony Joshua is undecided about retiring. When fighters get KTFO, <laughs> they get flaky in their decisions to retire or continue. Imagine what AJ is going through now. Definitely should retire for his own health and welfare. So, obviously everybody thinks they know what's best for everybody else, but nobody lives the actual life of the person. Fact of the matter is, I'm seeing Anthony Joshua. When you see that video of him talking about, you know, Came up short, going for it a third time and it's not easy. I can see and hear the punch drunkness setting in. Obviously, it's the day after the fight, so he's still probably a bit groggy. At the same time, this is how this punch drunkness sets in. And boy, looking at the fight, looking at his performance, I'm like, yo, you're moving from trainer to trainer to trainer and you're not learning anything, my guy, because obviously... Your trainer could not have told you, go back in a straight line with your hands down. Because that's crazy. I cannot imagine him saying that to you. But what he said to you in the corner, while people were listening. Left listening to Ben Davison, giving instructions to Anthony Joshua. 100%. That's what it's about. We get through this. Warrior spirit. 100%. But we've got to be smart. Yeah, I am, I am. We rush stepping in with the jab almost every time, unless you're galloping around. Step and bring it up. Yeah? It does a bit of a lull. Double jump, bring it up, roll the dice, he'll double on the right time, lift it, yeah? I think that's dangerous advice there, to be honest. I mean, getting him to bring it up off the double jab, Daniel throws that, that right hand straight off that double jab. And by bringing it up, he means an uppercut. He's going to walk himself straight onto his short right hand. If, it, if you ask me, I'd just say keep your hands up tight, get through these next two rounds, and then use your athleticism late down the stretch. And I'm just going to focus right here on Shane McGuigan. If you look at Shane McGuigan while Ben Davidson is giving his orders in the corner in between the fourth and the fifth round, he looks very concerned. He's like, what is he saying? What are you talking about? And then when the commentator allows him to speak after the situation has gone and they're going back to round five, he voices his opinion very, very articulately well. And obviously what he said... <laughs> It's crazy. Exactly what he said is exactly what happened. Now, I've always rated Shane McGuigan and I've always wondered why Anthony Joshua wouldn't consider Shane McGuigan because personally, I believe he's the best British boxing trainer right now. Son of the legendary Barry McGuigan and he is also an ex-boxer himself. I don't think Ben Davidson has ever fought. Shane McGuigan is an ex-boxer. He actually didn't turn pro, he just done the amateur route and when it was time to turn pro, he turned into a trainer for whatever his reasons were. And he seems to be a very good trainer. He's trained a few guys that were actually champions and he's trained a few guys from not being a champion into being a champion. And he's had a lot of success in his career as a trainer. You can't say the same for Ben Davidson. Even though he trained Tyson Fury, this doesn't make a successful trainer. This just means that you had a link with a guy that was actually good, who didn't really necessarily need a trainer, but made you look good by having you in his corner and telling him what to do. And now everybody rates you as some great trainer. I don't particularly know if you're a great trainer or not. I'm not going to say you're not a great trainer because I don't know. I know that guys go to you and they hire you to do the work. So you must have some sort of credibility. I just think that Shane McGuigan is a very good trainer from the evidence of what I've seen him produce over the years. So with that being said, it's likely that Anthony Joshua is going to drop Ben Davidson. If he does, which is not going to be surprising because when a boxer loses, they always look for a scapegoat as the trainer. I'm going to change trainers and get a new trainer, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. That's what happens in this game. I'm not going to say if it's wrong or right. 
I'm just going to say that's what I see happen. And once he does that, maybe he should look for Shane McGuigan to help him out. What I think sticky about that is I think that Shane trains Carolyn Dubois, <laughs> Daniel's sister. So that might be a bit sticky. <laughs> I don't think he should be going over to the Americans. Maybe, I mean, if he does, he should move over there and go and live over there and live, eat, sleep and dispense of boxing grassroots like you know in them rocky films when rocky got rich and then for him to go get good again he put all of his amenities and all of his wealth to one side and went and lived like a pauper and trained like a pauper and stuff like that remember those scenes in rocky if you've seen all the rockies and stuff that's what anthony joshua needs to do he needs to leave his life of luxury and go and live in squalor and go train like a a rugged man if he's gonna come back i mean as I said, if he comes back, I'm going to watch and it's going to be very interesting to see what he does going forward. Will he exercise this rematch clause? Does he beat Daniel Dubois if they have a rematch? I've never seen Anthony Joshua box so rubbish. I've never seen him fight so terribly. So for one, he can definitely do a better job than he done in his last outing. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Tell me what you think. Should he retire? And if he shouldn't retire, who should he get as a trainer? Should he stick with Ben Davidson? Is Ben Davidson so great? Tell me what you think. And I will see you in the next video.